Welcome to our video series Demystifying 5G, discussing this time aspects around over-the-air testing for 5G. I also welcome back the Benoit Dora. Hello Andreas, hello everyone. Benoit is uh, our director for OTA and Antenna Test Solutions here at Roden Schwartz and in recent videos we discussed for instance the measurement distance for 5G OTA measurements. We explored different approaches how to create far field conditions including indirect far field methods like plane wave converter and compact antenna test range. Uh, we see here at the table our reflector which is part of our Qatar solution. Uh, one question that I didn't ask you, uh, Benoit, it looks like gold. Is it actually gold? It's actual gold, yes. It and is? Yes. Uh, it's not just like to look nice, right? Although, even though it looks nice. Yeah. So why are we, why are we using gold? Uh, for two main reasons. One is gold has very high conductivity, so we reduce the, loos the losses, uh, metallic losses. And the other reason is gold doesn't oxidize. So nope. long term usage of the system. Okay. So uh, we're using the reflector to create a large enough quiet zone. Uh, we discussed important uh, quiet zone parameters like uh, amplitude and phase taper. You explained that very well to us, the ripple and so. Uh, that brings me actually to my next question related to that. Uh, what about the measurement repeatability for OTA measurements? Well, we can have actually quite good repeatability. Definitely um, a lot of our uh, People, uh, people in this industry are coming from the conducted world um, and they wonder about what kind of accuracy you can achieve in OTA. For sure, the measurement uncertainty contributors may be more. But actually, with good systems, you can control very well your repeatability and your uncertainty. And I'm showing you some uh, example of uh, reproducibility tests that we made in one of our larger chambers, these WPTC systems. Uh, where we put a horn antenna in the middle and actually we put it over and over again and measured at different frequencies. So this is what is shown on the curves. We can see realized gain, normalized to the maximum, but the realized gain was around 20 dBi. And uh, we can see uh, the average of this realized gain across 10 different measurements. And we can also see the deviations. And uh, what we actually see on uh, this uh, slide is actually that um, the deviations, they are within 0 0.2, 0 0.3 dB, maybe up to 0.4 in the very low levels of the pattern, which actually is normal to get more inaccuracy there because the dynamic, you're very close to the noise floor of your instruments also. So talking about uh, gain and measurements brings me also to one question that I wanted to ask you uh, about uh, uh, TX measurement in that terms. We talked a lot about the power uh, related measurements. What about uh, signal quality like an error vector magnitude? Well, yeah, signal quality is a key topic, of course. Um, definitely first in OTA systems, when we design them, we care about the dynamic because clearly the SNR of what you measure has a very high impact especially when you look at demodulated quantities like EVM, yeah. you want to be at a certain signal to noise ratio. Right. Uh, if you are below 20 dB, for example, in EVM, you start to really degrade your EVM and, and then the measurement you make is not actually qualifying the performance of your device. It's qualifying the incapacity of your system to measure it. Yeah. And um, what we do is to increase dynamic, for example, if we want to go at higher frequencies, we may use uh, up converters, down converters to actually uh, reduce the losses within the cables and so on. But in general, uh, for example, we saw with PWC or CADAR that we were also using these hardware transforms to somehow reduce the path loss, which also increases uh, the dynamic and then, of course, increases your SNR. And then, of course, the other important aspect is use high quality instruments, which have also internal low SNR or very good EVM performance. Yeah, so from that perspective, of course, very good that uh, Roller and Schwartz is a one-stop shop providing uh, uh, the antenna test solutions, but also the high-end equipment that can take these measurements and offer the dynamic range that's needed to carry out these measurements. Yes, clearly. And in terms of EVM, uh, I think our spectrum analyzers and signal generators are probably among the best on the market. Yeah. So uh, typically we come then also to the question about uh, normal and extreme measurement conditions. Um, I'm going into the direction of temperature. If I'm thinking out now that we have uh, these arrays controlled by uh, uh, magnitude and phase shifters, phase shifters, they have a different performance, different temperatures. So how we can combine OTA and uh, temperature measurements? So yes, actually, Andreas, um, 
considering temperature into testing, especially of these devices with uh, arrays and phase shifters is very important. We know these phase shifters, for example, they have very temperature dependent characteristics. And then um, depending on this temperature, uh, okay, the, your phase can change and your beam can actually steer differently or you can actually have a different peak. And this is something you want to test. And you have to, to consider two things with this. Um, when you are manufacturing those devices, so these device manufacturers, first they may be interested in reducing the uncertainty in their testing by controlling the temperature environment. That's one point. And the second point is they are also interested in testing their devices under different thermal conditions. You live in the US, uh, Andreas, and as a user of a cell phone, you would like to have your cell phone behaving in the same way, with the same performance, when you travel to Arizona or when you travel to Colorado. Or Alaska. Or Alaska even, yes. And that's also what matters to manufacturers, to mobile operators. So testing at different temperature conditions is definitely important. And for this, we have a solution in Rodent Schwartz. We have integrated in this ATS-1000 we discussed about, what we call the climate bubble. This bubble is an enclosure made of RF transparent material in which you can put your DUT and you can feed hot or cold air inside and then lock the air inside and test the DUT under the different conditions from minus 55 degrees Celsius to plus 85 degrees Celsius. Do I need to worry about uh, things like condensation? Yes, you have to worry about this, but if you interface with the right thermal stream and with the right process, you may actually remove condensation problems by injecting dry air, for example. Okay, that's possible with the system, I assume? It is possible. And uh, then the important thing, though, is that this bubble actually contains the air inside and avoid that you would melt your absorbers or you would freeze them. That's definitely don't, what you don't want to do. Okay. And in addition, it makes the movement of the DUT possible. So in the ATS, the, U the DUT rotates in azimuth, and then we have the antenna that we discussed before on the elevation arm, which is moving. So we can make full 3D pattern measurements of the DUT under the different thermal conditions. So it's very good that Rodenschwarz has this flexible antenna test system, the ATS-1000 that you mentioned, because we can install, for instance, the Qatar in it, we can install the temperature uh, control that you just described to us, so it's a very flexible uh, measurement solution long term that uh, customers can basically test every different aspects of OTA including temperature. That was really one of our thinking to create a very compact millimeter wave environment like baseline environment in which we could actually meet several requirements different applications that we could enable within this enclosure and that's what we are doing with our ATS 1000 base. Excellent. Thank you so much Benoit for all My the pleasure. explanation. With that, we come to the end of our special edition uh, discussing over-the-air testing aspects for 5G here in our video series Demystifying 5G brought to you by Roland Schwartz.